What's up everybody, Anton Crayley here from dropshiplifestyle.com. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about why I stopped dropshipping and why I believe you should too. Now I'm just gonna say it right now, you probably already think this is clickbait because I've been talking about dropshipping here on YouTube for the past decade. Dropship Lifestyle now has been around for 10 years plus. We have over 14,000 members from all around the world that I have taught to build dropshipping stores. But if that's all true, why did I stop dropshipping? Listen, that is exactly what we're gonna discuss in today's episode of Dropship Weekly. All right, so tell me if this sounds like you. You find out about dropshipping. Maybe you see a YouTube video or most likely an ad. You then go to google.com, you search for dropshipping or ways to make money with dropshipping. And then what you find through this keyword are things that will tell you how to dropship from China. Or what you find are middlemen suppliers. These are websites that basically say, pay us whatever it may be, $100 a month or a couple grand a year, and we'll give you access to millions of products to sell. Or maybe you find information on dropshipping with the arbitrage model. Basically trying to buy stuff from either Amazon or walmart.com and then sell it on your own Shopify store. These are the things that are generally associated with the term dropshipping. And while they all are technically dropshipping, they are all things that I want you to stay far, far away from because none of these are ways to actually build a real business in the long term. And even more than that, if you use any of these terms when it comes to dropshipping, what supply and even more than that, which we'll talk about, are going to think is that you are a newbie, that you don't know what you're doing, and that you're most likely not going to build a business that lasts. So if you go with the term dropshipping to any big supplier that you want to work with, they will immediately assume that you're working on one of these models. They will assume that you were a newbie. And when it comes time for your application to get approved to sell their products, you're going to get a rejection. We don't want that, okay? So if we're not gonna use this term, right, if we're not gonna be referring to ourselves as dropshippers, and if I'm not gonna be a dropshipper anymore, then what am I and what should you be? That is what I call an internet retailer, okay? Simple enough, internet retailer. What does this mean? We sell products online, simple enough. Now you might be thinking, well, internet retailer doesn't inherently mean that your orders are gonna be fulfilled through a supplier, and that's true. So when it gets to that stage of the conversation with suppliers, we refer to ourselves as non-stocking dealers, okay? Very simple. Now what this does immediately is remove all of that hesitation in suppliers' minds when you try to use this term, okay? That term does not work, and honestly, it hasn't for a long time. Now, we could talk about why, but quickly, the main reason is because this business model has gotten a bad reputation really probably for the past decade because, again, when you search for it, mainly what you find are people talking about dropshipping from China, which, by the way, does not work. Shopify even bought the app Oberlo. If you might be familiar with this, this is going back now maybe five years or so, which was an app that let people drop ship from China. That lasted maybe a few years under Shopify's ownership, okay? One of the biggest companies in the e-commerce space, probably the biggest as far as platforms go, and they still went under. Then working with middlemen, again, that is not what you want to do. There's no way to make real money there because you're always paying a markup because there's someone in between you and the products. So let's just say, for example, the marker I'm using right now, I don't know if you could see this, it's from a company called King, and let's say I Googled dropship King products, it's a smaller brand, but maybe I found a website that said, we have King products for you to dropship plus all these others. Well, that company is going to be a middleman who I then have to pay a markup to in order to sell the product to the end consumer, meaning my margin is disappearing, okay? So what we wanna do is work directly with the brands that we sell for, have a direct relationship as an authorized retailer, and we're not doing that by contacting them and saying, hey, can we drop ship your products? We're doing that by contacting them and saying, hey, we are an internet retailer. This is our store. We wanna work with you because of X, Y, and Z reasons. And that is going to greatly increase the probability of getting approved to sell their products without anything else being true, okay? That is why I stopped drop shipping, the first reason. I am not using this term. Are my orders being fulfilled by the suppliers? Of course. Is it technically drop shipping? Of course. But this word out of the gate when you pick up the phone and call a supplier is going to be a red flag. So stop using it just like I did. Okay, let's move on to the next thing I wanna share with you. Just like I mentioned earlier, this goes well beyond just getting approved with suppliers. And let's go up here and put 
dropshipper, okay? How can this negatively affect your business if you refer to yourself as one? And also, let me just say, you know, I know this YouTube channel that you're listening to this on right now is called Dropship Lifestyle. I know my website is Dropship Lifestyle. I know I use dropshipping in this video title. The reason I do that is because I want you to find it and be able to correct the ways you're basically referring to yourself to give you a higher probability of success. So we're not gonna change the name to Internet Retailer Lifestyle. We're gonna keep it Dropship Lifestyle so you could find us, and then I'm gonna help you to go the right direction so you have the best chances of success. So. How can using this term negatively affect you? Well, we just talked about the supplier situation, right? Lower approval rates. That right away is something that will just destroy your business. The companies that say, oh yeah, sure, you could sell our stuff. When you call them and say, hey, can I drop ship your stuff? They're gonna be the ones that are lowest on the list of the suppliers you want. If you're a member of my coaching program, Dropship Lifestyle, you know we put suppliers in three buckets. We have bronze, we have silver, and we have gold suppliers. Bronze are typically the ones that will approve you when you say, hey, can I drop ship your stuff? So those aren't the ones you want. You don't want to sell for bronze suppliers. Okay, next thing this can hurt you with if you refer to yourself as a drop shipper, and again, a reason I stopped drop shipping, is with payment processors. Now, again, drop shipping has had a bad reputation for a decade now, and the main reason is because when people run these businesses a lot of times, they don't consider them real businesses, right? What do I mean by that? Well, they think I'm gonna build a store in a weekend, I'm gonna set it up, it's gonna make all this money, and we'll see how things go, right? They don't see it as the same as if they were going to go sign a lease in a strip mall down the block from where they live, build out an entire store, let's say selling pet supplies, put in the time and the effort and the actual research that goes into this is gonna be a real business, right? So because of that, a lot of people build businesses, maybe they even get sales on their drop shipping stores, but they don't have any customer service, they don't care about the products they sell, they just try to find trending products, then they get refunds, then they get chargebacks, and then payment processors think drop shippers have really bad return rates it's really bad chargebacks, let's not work with them. So you don't wanna be using this term with payment processors either, because again, it just has a bad reputation. And I'm gonna keep going back to this. It doesn't mean the model of having suppliers fulfill orders is bad at all. It means the way a lot of people get into this business because of what they find when they search on Google harms them in the long run. Now, another thing here is with different ad platforms. Same reasons that I just mentioned for payment processors. A lot of people that try to drop ship these cheap products from China or use the arbitrage model, they run into inventory issues, whether that be with quality control, so shipping out products that customers are like, what did I just get? Or products that take forever to ship, and the customers aren't happy, which means they leave negative reviews on ads, which means they mark things as spam, and that is gonna obviously hurt you if you wanna run a long-lasting business that you can grow through paid traffic, which I am obviously a huge fan of. And then just even more into this, we have customers. You know, I've seen some people build stores and in their About Us page, they talk about how they drop ship products. Don't do that. Again, customers, when they hear drop shipping, even though it's a completely legitimate business, it has that negative connotation, so don't use it. And then finally, what I'll add is just other business owners. And it's funny, if you go to any like Facebook groups for e-commerce store owners, like Shopify store owners, or on Reddit groups or anything like that, whenever you see people mention drop shipping, it will get hate. But the reason it gets hate, and this always gets clarified in the comments, it's actually funny to see, is because when people mention it, people automatically think, oh, this guy or girl is new to e-commerce, they wanna drop ship. The other profitable store owners think that means they're gonna try to find cheap stuff from China, run a bunch of direct response ads, and basically, burn bridges and hurt e-commerce as a whole. Now that's why if you actually wanna do this and you wanna get rid of all these problems from day one, don't refer to yourself as a drop shipper. Again, what did I say earlier we do? We are internet retailers, specifically non-stocking dealers. That's the same thing, this is key, it's the same thing as drop shipping. We are running on that model, but we are not using this term for all of the reasons just listed. Okay. Let's get into the final thing now because you know we talked about all these negatives of the term drop shipping. Um, talked about what we're doing, which is drop shipping. We're just not calling it that. Let's talk about now probably the most important thing in my opinion, and that is how to build a real 
business, right? Not a burner store like we talked about where people you know, throw it together in a few days and say, let's see what happens. But let's talk about how to actually build an online business where you're an internet retailer. Again, suppliers are shipping orders for you. Let's talk about how to do it in a way that can not only be profitable this month, but that can be profitable next year, that in five years can be a massive asset you own, and that could be something that maybe one day you hand down to one of your children to continue running, okay? Let's, or have an exit event if that's what you want. What we do every time we build stores is follow the same exact seven step process. Now being this is a relatively short YouTube video, we're not gonna go into each step in detail, but I will give you a very clear overview so you don't make mistakes whether you're building your first or your next drop shipping store, internet real retailer store. I'm still gonna call it drop shipping. Keep that between me and you. Don't use it with any of the people we just talked about. So what is step one of our process? Well, it is niche selection. Now, this is where a lot of people, again, go wrong because you might think, okay, Anton, you know, this sounds interesting. I, I want to try this, right? And then what do people do? Again, they go to Google, they type in drop shipping products, keywords like that, and they find basically whatever, you know, Google tells them is trending or hot. They see a top 10 list and say, okay, I'm just going to sell one of these. You don't want to do that. With niche selection, my advice to you is to do exactly what I do and what I've been doing for a decade now, which is look for opportunity everywhere and keep a running list. I keep it in my phone in the notes app. I thought it was my pocket, it's over there. But I keep a running list of product ideas. Now some things that we want to consider here are do the products sell at $200 or more? We don't wanna sell low ticket products, okay? So keep that in mind. And then other than that, we wanna look for things that apply or appeal, I should say, to the upper middle class because they are the best buyers that give you the least amount of headaches. And we also wanna find things that aren't dominated by a few brands. Like right now, I'm recording this as a video into a Canon camera. We're not gonna drop ship digital cameras because we're not gonna be able to compete with the biggest names of the world that sell Canon. We wanna find things where customers really don't care who the product comes from, meaning the supplier. Maybe they have a little bit of preference, but it's not dominated by two or three big brands, okay? So first, keep that list, that's step one. Now step two, which is disgustingly overlooked with a lot of people that wanna get into this business, is market research. Now I personally spend a ton of time here because I don't want to do step three through seven unless I know I have a very high probability of success, and I recommend you do the same. There is no point to build a store, get suppliers, optimize your site, get traffic, and start hiring people to help you if it's not going to work. So while this phase can't guarantee success, it can get you 99% of the way there. So here we're doing tests like validating the price points of the items, making sure there's not too much competition, making sure the products are evergreen. So they sold last year, they sold five years ago, they'll continue selling in the future. That is what we want. Because again, we're looking to build a business that can compound on itself. Now, after this step, we move to step three. Now, I'm gonna have to start writing smaller because I made these way too big. And this is when we create the store, okay? And you might be thinking like, wow, you do you know, all this research, you don't even have a store yet, you don't have suppliers, you don't have anything. Why do you build a store here? Because for this model to work, and again, not to work with the companies you find when you Google dropship suppliers, but to work with the ones that you can actually make money with, we go to step four, which is supplier approvals. Now, the good suppliers, again, the ones I keep referring to, not the ones that just say, yeah, we drop ship, come on, sell our stuff, right? Because they don't have any margin, they don't care about their products, they're not worth selling for. But in order to get approved with the best ones, you need your store created in advance. And what we do is basically create the store to look exactly as it would look if it was the live store. But instead of uploading real products, because we don't have real products yet, we upload what I call demo products. Basically, these are stock images, three to five of them, with basic descriptions, and we're not doing this obviously trying to get sales or trying to deceive anybody, but when we contact suppliers, instead of calling and saying, hey, this is Anton, can I drop ship your stuff? Calling and saying, hey, this is Anton from whatever it is, you know, antonspetstore.com. If you want, you can go take a look at our site. We're interested in becoming an internet retailer and selling your products because of reasons X, Y, and Z. If you'd like to, you can go take a look at our site. It's not live yet, but our official launch date is X date in the future. And I'm telling you, that conversation is going to go infinitely better than the one of saying, hey, can I drop ship your products? I don't have a store. You know, let's do this. That's not gonna work. They're gonna hang up on you. Okay. So once you get suppliers approved, then obviously you swap out the demo products, you put the real products on your site, and we move to step five, which is where we optimize for conversions. And here we're using a 
bunch of tactics that I've learned over the past you know, 15 years in this business to basically make it so that once people find your website, you have the highest probability of turning the website visitors into customers. Okay, so we're using tons of tactics here, but we wait until we have actual products on our site to put those optimizations in place, but that's what we're doing in step five. From there, we go to step six, and this is where you can start making money. This is where, for me, things get really exciting, and this is where we can get traffic, okay? Again, not applying for a bunch of different ad platforms and putting 90% of our budget into meta ads, trying to get people to click an ad to a product page and buy. Instead, we're running extremely targeted shopping ads where people see our product image, they see our product price, they see our store name, and by the time they click those ads, they are very likely to buy. So very specific ad strategy here. And then finally, step seven of the process, once sales are coming in, once we know how to process orders with suppliers, once we have profits, then it is time to do what I call outsource and automate. And for here, we're using a bunch of different automations that we've built in combined with certain Shopify apps and also hiring people typically on onlinejobs.ph. And we're doing that so that we, as the business owner, owning a real business, can basically oversee everything in 15 to 30 minutes per day while running a highly profitable semi-automated store. Now, if you wanna go deeper into these things, I'll post a link in the description. Click it, you can register for a two-hour in-depth training I have. I would highly encourage you to do that. But just know that these steps are in order for a reason. If you start switching stuff up, things will fall apart. I created what I call the dropship blueprints because there really is a blueprint to this. There really is something that is repeatable, but it's gotta follow these steps. And if you follow these steps, instead of just having, again, a burner store or something you throw up to see what works, you will have a real business. You will be an internet retailer, of course, that's still not stocking items. You're still gonna have supplier shipping for you. You're still technically drop shipping. But instead of having issues with bad suppliers or payment processors or ad platforms or customers, or instead of being ashamed to tell people you're getting into drop shipping, you will have something you can be proud of as an internet retailer. You will have something that will grow over the years. You will have something you can hand down to a family member or sell for an exit if that is what you choose. So as always, guys, I hope you got value from this one. If you did, leave a like, subscribe to the video, and I will talk to you in the next episode of Dropship Weekly. See everybody.